dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. Welcome to this homily on this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. Let me start with an old story with which many of you are familiar. There was once this professor in a college who was an atheist, and he wanted to prove that there is no God existing. So he challenged the students one day in the class, saying, I can prove to you that there is no God, because I challenge, if there is God, let him come down and strike me. He waited for a few minutes, looked around with a smile, and then he saw one of the students coming up the stage. And before realizing what was happening, the student struck him down. And all perplexed and embarrassed, the professor stood up and asked, but why did you do that? And the student replied, sir, God was busy and so he asked me to do it. Dear friends, this is a story, a joke. However, it communicates to us some precise meaning. God wants his people to help him to carry out his mission. God has a plan for the world, and it is to be achieved, to be realized through his people. In the first reading we heard from prophet Isaiah, where God is telling, peace and prosperity I will extend to the whole world like a river, and the wealth of the nations to everyone like an overflowing stream. And in the second reading, St. Paul says, God wants us to be a new creation. That's God's plan for the whole world. And this dream of God is to be realized, to be materialized through us. And today's readings are helping us to reflect upon this mission that we have received, to implement, to materialize God's dream for the world or in Christian terms, to be a missionary of God's plan for the world. And the gospel passage we are given to reflect upon today is Jesus sending the 70 or 72 disciples to preach the gospel. So in this liturgy, we reflect upon this God's universal call to be a missionary, to be an agent of God's plan in this world. And we ask three questions to ourselves. Who, how, and what? Who is supposed to be this agent? Who is supposed to be a missionary? How we are supposed to realize this God's plan? And what exactly are we supposed to achieve through our activities? So let's go into these three questions. Who, how, and what of missionary activity? We start with the first question, who is called to be a missionary, to be an agent of God's plan in this world? In the gospel passage we hear, heard today from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, at that time the Lord appointed 70 others to se and sent them on ahead of him. In some manuscripts it is 72, 70 or 72. As we see, in all the three synoptic Gospels, we find Jesus sending the 12 apostles, Matthew chapter 10, Mark chapter 6, and Luke chapter 9. In addition, Luke alone says that, no, Jesus sent another 70 or 72 disciples to preach the Gospel. And it is important to understand why St. Luke is describing, giving us another, a second sending of the apostles of a bigger number, not the apostles as such. As we know, the 12 apostles represented the 12 tribes of the Israel people. So they were sent, they were the chosen ones who were with Jesus and sent specifically. Now, possibly because St. Luke was writing to a Gentile community, a non-Jewish Christian community, and who were possibly wondering, what happens to us? Those are privileged communities who have an apostolic tradition, precisely preached the gospel by the apostles. And we were preached the gospel 
not by them. What about us? And St. Luke wanted to assure them, no, not only them, you also are a privileged group. And 70 or 72, according to the book of Genesis chapter 10, was the number of the descendants of Noah. That means that was the number of all the nations in the world. St. Luke is telling us that the responsibility of preaching the gospel, of being a missionary, is not only given to the twelve, but to everyone, to every nation. The whole Christian believers are called to be a missionary, to be preaching the gospel, to be an agent in realizing God's plan. And that's what the church has always been teaching. When Second Vatican Council teaches, the church by her very nature is missionary. And one of the Second Vatican Council documents on the apostolate of the laity says, there are innumerable opportunities open to the laity for the exercise of their apostolate of making the gospel known and men holy. The very testimony of their Christian lives and good works done in a supernatural spirit have the power to draw men to believe and to God. So, the church tells us who is to be a missionary, everyone. And this quotation also tells us how we are supposed to be doing it. We are called to bear witness to Christ. That is how we are called to be missionaries. We have very often heard about this one, but we were never struck by the implications of it, the importance of it. Because whenever we think of missionary activities, we think of far off places. We think of the 77% of the world population that does not accept Jesus Christ. Yes, that is true. But there is a more important and more subtle and more effective way we all can be missionaries. Three words that Jesus uses there that will help us to be an effective missionary. Firstly, Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore. Pray for vocations. Pray for missionaries. Pray for people who have not heard the word of God. Secondly, Jesus says, when you enter a house, wish peace to this house. A positive attitude towards all, a positive desire that the whole world should come to know the gospel. And thirdly, Jesus says, preach, say that the kingdom of God has come near you. Preaching is a positive action through our lives. It is bearing witness to who you are, what you believe in. Therefore, it is not good enough to be a father, a mother, a teacher, a student, a nurse, but we are called to be a Christian father, a Christian mother, a Christian nurse, a Christian teacher. It is not difficult to be a missionary. According to Jesus' plan given today to us, it is simple. Pray, wish for a, have a positive attitude, and also bear testimony. Far off places, Yes, the apostles, the twelve, are sent already. The missionaries, those youngsters, young people who are willing and courageous, have gone to many places in the world, evangelizing them still. That we leave to them. But wherever we are, we are called to be missionaries. And that's not difficult. And the third question, what? What are we expected to achieve through our activities, through our missionary life. Let's again come back to the gospel passage. When Jesus sent the 70 or the 72 disciples, we read, He sent them two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go. Their mission was to prepare the places prepare the people for the arrival of Jesus, like John the Baptist. And Jesus gave them a strategic plan. 
go two by two, have no extra provisions, stay in the house where you are, eat what is said before you, and so on. Very simple. But Jesus wanted such a naive, simple strategy because they were not the ones who were supposed to do the work. It is Jesus himself. We set a small fire in one place. And if it spreads to thousands of hectares of land, it is because of the wind. The wind is the cause, not us. And Jesus said, the wind blows where it wills. So is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will work and make sure that the plan of God will work out. What training possibly these 70, 72 disciples had? The apostles, we know, they were called to be with Jesus. And these others, we don't know. That's not important. The training is not important because they are there to prepare way for God. God is the one doing the things. So dear sisters and brothers, we are called to be the missionaries. We are called to prepare the place for God, to help God to implement, to realize His plan for the salvation of the, world, the whole world. A little bit of abstinence from our daily comforts, a strong desire for God's kingdom to spread, and our daily prayer will help God to materialize His plan. May the Lord bless all of us to be His missionaries. May He bless all of us and all our dear and near ones, all our intentions. Amen.